Hey guys, how's it going? So it is an exciting day. The garden center just received, I think, three separate truckloads of things yesterday, and uh, one of which had a bunch of proven winter's plants on. And I know they got some honey berries. So Aaron, Benjamin, and I are going to head down to the garden center to look through the new loads, pick up some things. So this is probably gonna be a uh, kind of shopping slash plant haul video in the end. I uh, thought you guys might like to see everything going on down there. It's the train. Why well, don't open the window? No, we won't open the window. We know it's too loud, huh? It's, it's going oh, back. is it going backwards? It is. Whoa. That is so cool, buddy. Oh, bye bye, train. Is that silly? When we park, when the when the train comes, there's it went backwards like this. Uh huh. And it keeps doing that. Oh, here we are. Oh, there's actually a parking space. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, it's starting to fill up out there. Oh, I love it. I need a cocoa I'm fiber liner too. Okay. Chicken coop. <gasps> Nicely done, bud. Okay, bud. Let's go find Nana. Uh, I think probably out here. All right, guys, so entrance of the nursery, it's starting to fill up out here. You can see the beautiful forsythias, the show-off forsythias. You can see hellebores and iberis in bloom. Always lovely to hear the fountains running. We need to get our fountains going. We need to do more forsythia. Didn't we have like a gopher eat the roots yes. of ours or something? Yeah, up in that front bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All we three should, of them, all three of them. We should plant, because they're so cool in the early spring, Yeah. that yellow. Maybe we should uh, Maybe we should get some, get well, some today. We, all, so we have more opportunity. Yeah. Ooh, these are pretty too. These are an ornamental cherry called Little Twist. Little Twist? Yeah, that's a beauty. Look at that. And then here are some of those, more of those sprinter boxwoods, like the ones we put in the vegetable garden pots. They're so nice. Oh, okay. It's going to be really hard not to be, go like plant by plant here because look at this witch hazel. This is an Arnold's Promise witch hazel right there, and that is beautiful. Okay, here we go. Looks like kind of the same things in here, some ferns and such. Oh, I like this piece. This is from Unique Stone, I think, Erin. I hadn't seen this one in person. Yeah, Metropolitan Women, Woman Birdbath. That's you like a beauty. The finish on this? I do. That looks like kind of the Galloway urn yeah. finish that we have. I, I kind of like the more gray. I think that's really pretty to have something a little different tucked in here and there. Yeah. Uh, they started to get some spring crops. Uh, there are some strawberries here, it looks like. Fort Laramie strawberries on this table. And they look really nice and healthy. And then another variety, what are those? Ozark Beauties probably, yep. Definitely a lot more full than the last time we Did were down here. Bloomerangs. Oh yeah, Bloomerang Dark Purple. And they are loaded up with buds. You can see all the buds all the blooms there. Oh, Aaron, there's some double-decker uh, box of topiaries over there. I'm not gonna buy them. That's I know it. you guys are probably shocked. I honestly don't think I have any containers available <laughs> anymore for more topiary. Ooh, I like these. This is really pretty. That's a sweet looking statue. You know, something I appreciate about Unique Stone Statuary, I'm not, like we don't have a ton, well, I shouldn't say we don't have a ton of statuary. <laughs> Yes, we do. Um, but I appreciate most of their statues have normal or nice looking faces. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of statues that have kind of creepy looking faces or like the eyes are weird or, or they look kind of smashed or something mm -hmm. weird. So anyway, I just, I really like that. They have like kind of, I like the finish. So in their greenhouse right now, they mostly just have roses, most of which come in bare root and they pot up in these peat pots. And they let them grow on for a couple weeks. I mean, it's not heated in here, uh, but they let them just kind of gradually ease into the temperatures outside. Um, and then they'll move them all out here pretty quick. And then there are a few fresh perennials back here we can kind of take a look at. There's some peonies. So one called Blaze. Carl Rosenfield. Ooh, there's some Columbine. Dragonfly hybrids. I love Columbine. I actually love that it seeds itself everywhere because it's such a beautiful, soft texture and beautiful blooms. There's some ferns, Cristata the King. We planted some of these near our 
three trellises by the Quebec kitchen entrance. It's a hellebore. This one is called Winter Jewels Jade Star. Oh yeah. These are campanulas, I think. Yep, these are blue waterfall campanulas. So beautiful blue blooms and they're more of a ground cover type. Oh, and look at those anemones. Those are beautiful. And these are some of the euphorbia. I get asked every time I do a video behind our chicken coop, I have some of these. And this is called Ascot Rainbow Euphorbia. Um, they are hardy to negative 10. So I didn't know if they would actually survive, but our winters have been so mild lately that mine have just done beautifully. Oh, and there's more ferns, more hellebores. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's some spring crops. So there's some uh, Detroit, nope, Touchstone Gold Beets right here. I usually direct seed beets. Cabbage, Red Acre, Ruby Perfection. Boy, I'm spot on with my ID skills today. What do we got here? Late Flat Dutch Cabbage. There's some Gypsy Broccoli. Copenhagen Market Cabbage. Stonehead Cabbage. Oh, I just love seeing all of that. Uh, Bulls Blood Beets, which I planted in a container recently. Bl Bright Light Swiss Chard, beautiful in spring containers as well. In fact, I might get some of that today. Ever Color Ever Glow Carex. Look at those gorgeous seed heads. I love that. And then Glacier Blue Euphorbia. Hmm. Hardy to zero. That is tempting. That's beautiful. With our forecast, like I feel like I could get any of this stuff and have it be fine. We have one night that might get down. It was said 33, I think. Um, and then the rest of them are high 30s and low 40s. And like tomorrow it's supposed to be 71. Um, so anyway, I think we're getting into the safe zone. We'll see. Sometimes it tricks us though. We've got a whole table full of Semper Vivums right here. So gorgeous. And now we're gonna head back to the pallets because there are just pallets and pallets of stuff back here. So as we get to the end of the tree racks, we've got the fruit trees right here, which we looked at in a previous uh, video. Oh, look at all that stuff back there. So much to look at. But I wanted to pop over here and show you guys the stumpery because I talked about it briefly in the last video we did down here, but I didn't really show the infrastructure. Isn't that cool? So this is just a little garden idea my mom wanted to do back here. Just a really fun, just something different. Uh, so she kind of dreamed up this arbor and then the guys down here built it. So it's built around a steel frame. You can see if you get closer, hopefully you can see in there, steel frame that's got, it's got two sides there. And then every once in a while there's like a brace piece in, in the middle. So that's the whole distance of this arbor. And it actually goes down underneath as well. So if you take a look down here, it's very stable. I mean, right there, that, you can see it pretty good. And then each individual log is either wired on or they're bolted together. So these bolts right here run through and bolt to this piece right here. So it's not going anywhere. You can see all the bolts underneath there, but isn't that cool? So as soon as they have most of this stuff out and displayed, I think they are going to use this as like a display area for plants as well. But you can see all of the white cans here, which is exciting. There's some beautiful yellow twig dogwoods. And then I think the honeyberries, this is the newest one I think that they've added. It's called Yesberry Honey Bunch. And it's more of a compact variety. I believe three to five feet tall and wide. It's a zone three down to zone three. So three to seven. Let's see. It says grow with another Yesberry for maximum harvest. So we'll see that one is a honey bunch. We'll see if there's some other varieties. I'm not sure if there are or not, but that palette's full of ginger wine, nine barks. And oh my gosh, these stumps are so cool. See how they've got some of them kind of mounted. These are where the um, raised beds were. So that's a really unique way to, utilize that use them as like kind of little berms there spilled wine wigellas here i won't go every single plant here because it would take us all day fireball uh burning bushes this is something that i would like to add into the new space because there is nothing like a burning bush i mean they seem like fairly common they are very common around here anyway i don't know about for you guys but they're used a lot in commercial applications but they're so low maintenance and offer so much in terms of fall interest. 
cannot get the tag open. Five to seven feet tall and wide. Yeah, I think this would be just so gorgeous. Look at that color. There's some Caryopteris in there, Beyond Midnight. There's some Itias, Little Henry, Sweet Spire. Really pretty leaves. These look like last year leaves. They're really pretty. And I think Isley Nursery dropped off yesterday. So there's a bunch of specimen evergreens over there and Japanese maples. So things like this. Sumagaki, Japanese maple. A lot of the nice ones that are in boxes, they're a little bit older, a little bit bigger. This one is a Katsura, Japanese maple, which I've got one in the corner by our back shade porch. Arctic fire and Arctic yellow. See the yellow dogwoods, aren't those awesome? Mm, I've got three of these out by our greenhouse, ready to plant them. And you can see they get the white berries on them, little discs of white blooms before the berries form. But boy, for winter interest, these are awesome. And something a little bit different than the red. You know, we're used to seeing the red twig, which are gorgeous. But it's fun to see something that bright as well. Summer wine nine barks. What is this? A groundhog aronia. You know, we planted aronias by our back kitchen entrance, and I think either they didn't like this spot or the irrigation wasn't quite right. I might need to try again, but they didn't, they didn't do super well for me right there. Doesn't mean I did it right, because that was the first time that I've ever planted them. So fine line improved. These are new ones. So fine lines are ones I'm familiar with, but the fine line improved I've never planted, but apparently they've got an improved growth habit and they have really good growth from bottom all the way to top. You guys, I think I just located some more honey berries. Yes, a sugar pie. Perfect. I'm gonna grab one of each variety. So we've got good pollination and we can get some good honey berries. I like the look of this one. It's a nice looking shrub. I should always just grab a cart before I come back here. I usually end up with a pile and then I have to go get a cart. <laughs> Okay, so there's my pile so far. Two beautiful honeyberries. Hascap, I guess is what they're called. Japanese hascaps. Okay, so I think I'm gonna take this a little bit more systematically. We're gonna go row by row here. So first row looks like some Rosa Sharon's, uh, lavender, no, blue chiffon Rosa Sharon's, which we've got some of those in our garden already. Beautiful blooms. Looks like some more burning bushes some spirea, neon flash, it's got a pretty bloom. These are amber jubilee nine barks. I love all nine barks in the spring. I mean, the new growth is so pretty. Some lemon drift roses. We planted some lemon zest roses, which are kind of similar. And I love the lemon zest, really pretty. Little Devil Nine Barks. I think these stay a little bit smaller than others. Three to four feet tall and wide. Yeah, most Nine Barks want to get at least five to six. And then this row, there's some traditional fine line bu uh, buckthorns here. These are all sold. In fact, all of these Tiger Eyes Sumacs are sold and I wanted one so bad. I had one in the back of our truck and my mom had to run out here and say, hey, <laughs> I sold 10 of those to somebody. She hadn't had a chance to pull them all yet, but these are so beautiful. Look at the growth on that. And the uh, fall color is just, I mean, the most beautiful mix of yellow, orange, and red. But six by six, zone four through eight. And they look like um, antlers, like fuzzy new antlers. The stems do. Oh, it's on my list, you guys. Weeping white pine. And I really do like these two, these are Mr. Bowling Ball Arbs. They've got a really nice shape and kind of wispier foliage. I've got the tater tot arbs, which I do like as well. They've got more ferny look. These are a little bit more open. Some rainbow pillar surface berries. Now, I'm not familiar with this one. There's the tag, let's read up. Blooms in spring with beautiful white flowers. Strong upright habit, good screen or hedge, 20 by 15. Huh, interesting. Got some hydrangeas. These look like they're all pinky winkies. What is this, a red heart hibiscus, Rosa Sharon. Some littler improved fine lines. And a bunch of sprinter boxwoods. 
I've been really impressed with our sprinters. So two to four feet tall and wide. They stay a little bit smaller than like the tr traditional winter gems, I think, which these are an improved version of the winter gems. They grow faster and they don't bronze out as bad. Ours did bronze a little bit this winter though, a little bit more than they usually have, but they usually bounce back with color really quick. There's some more arbs looking like little, like creatures somehow. <laughs> I don't know, they need eyeballs. Little giant dwarf arbs. Miss Canada Lilacs, a Wentworth Viburnums. There's some North Pole Arbs right here. You guys know we're a big fan of those. I don't even know how many we have on our property now, but quite a number. And then something really interesting, which I picked up a couple of the black lace variety the other day, but they're growing them as standards now. So they're growing them as a tree form, which to me, like this is the instant karma variety. So it's got more of a variegated leaf. And as it matures, it's more of like a white, like a whitish yellow, light green. Um, they're really beautiful, but they grow so fast. I feel like elderberries is a standard. I mean, it's gonna be a constant nightmare of maintenance, <laughs> but I'm in for it. Um, like I signed up for it. I got the black lace type, which I think there might be a couple more I can show you um, on another palette, but interesting. Ooh, ivory silk lilac trees. Have you guys seen one of these before? They are so pretty. We should probably have one of these on the new property. Look at the blooms. And a small-ish tree, 20 by 15. I mean, not tiny, but not huge. Oh my gosh, there's just pallet after pallet after pallet of things. Kind of want to get into this stuff though, because, oh, like look at this. This is a Chief Joseph Lodgepole Pine right here, and that's its color. Like it's gold and beautiful. They get six by four. Can see a picture of it right there and some people i find either love it or hate it they either love it like kind of recognizing its uniqueness or they think it looks like it's dying <laughs> one of the two i'm in the first camp i think it's super unique and beautiful and look at when you kind of pair it up against the blue of a blue spruce like how gorgeous and set apart that looks i love it there's a jubilee weeping alaskan cedar so this one stays a little bit more no 25 by 15 i think that's what we put in the corner of our west side flower bed. Just a bunch of beautiful stuff. Taylor's sunburst pine right here. There's a Fukuzumi Japanese white pine. Look at the structure of this one. They're kind of all mashed together. It's a little bit hard to see. Concord barberries, which I planted a hedge of concords at our last house by our front door. And I love this. Look at how tall and skinny. What is this? It's a juniper of some kind. Troutman, a Troutman juniper. I just looked it up on the Isley website and it says it grows 15 by four. Really tall, narrow evergreen. I love that. A Gentar arborvita. Is that Gentar? I've never heard of that variety before. Yeah, look at those. Aren't those cool, the Troutman junipers? They almost look coastal to me. It would be neat to have somewhere. Be easy to tuck in too, only needing four feet of real estate. Oh, look at this. Is that a foxtail blue spruce right there? Mm. And the Serbian spruce right there, the weeping. What you doing? Did you find Nana inside? Did you? Did... Swing with Daddy with me? You're gonna swing with Dad. You want me to swing with you and Daddy? Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's go do it. Ooh, an umbrella pine. I have one of these. They're awesome. Look at these. Uh, Aaron, look at these Troutman junipers. Aren't those cool? Right, uh, no, right here? The little slender ones? Yeah. I think they have a cool structure. They look kind of coastal to me. Yeah. They grow 15 by 4. You like big things. I do. Yeah. Well, I like architectural things too that are... Yeah. You gotta have kind of both. Yeah. You, Keep you, it interesting. You what are you gonna get? Uh, well, I got two honeyberries so far. Okay. I'm just doing kind of like a cursory. I'm kind of looking at everything with everyone else here. I'm just showing the palettes as we go and kind of getting some ideas. And then in the end, I'll probably walk through with a cart, gather some things. What do you think, Benjamin? What do you see? Oh. I can't walk down there. No, you get all wet. I'll get all green and messy. There's brown in there. There is some brown in there. Quite a bit of brown. That's you, huh? Ooh, look at the topiaries. Well, City Line Mars. Should we try one in a container? Yeah, we should. Yeah. All right, you want to pick one out? Well, they're not all the same. 
Well, I think it's oh, blue or blue or pink, depending on your pH. Gotcha. It'll be interesting to see if we can make them stay blue. Yeah. Purple That's pillar. I don't know. I think we've got purple pillar in a container. I just haven't planted them yet. Oh, is it Chesky? Is that how you say it? Gold? A dwarf birch. I don't have any of these. Oh, you want to get in the side by side? Okay, hold on. Two to four feet tall and wide is all. Have we planted any of these Chesky gold birches? I don't remember having planted any. They're really cool looking. They grow two to four feet tall and wide is all. I don't know. We should get some. We should. Not pretty. A dwarf birch, yeah. I didn't even know they had these. I didn't either. <laughs> what are those over there? Oh, uh, uh, Euonymus. Oh, and, okay. oh, they're, they're leafing out. Are they? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. and Spirea. Limelights. We should do more flagellas. Yeah, they do really, I mean, they do well. If I remember to put a dripper on them. I really like this too. I think I want to have one of these. I love the open nature of that evergreen right there. It looks like a Christmas tree to me. It is a Arctosiberian spruce. It's a spruce, so it'll do well for us. I feel like one of those would be beautiful on the new property, as well as one of another one of these. Also, I did show you guys these in one of our last tours, kind of. I didn't show it. It was kind of in the background, but these are espaliers, and I think this one is either, this is a pear. Malice. Oh, this is a gala. It's an apple. A gala apple. So those are the type that have been trained to grow up against a flat surface. So you could put it up against a wall of a building or a, or a fence or something like that. Or just put it out and create your own kind of living fence. They're really cool looking. I've got one behind the greenhouse that's a pear. And I love, love these variegated boxwood spirals. Love them. Also, here are the black lace elderberry um, standards. Isn't that interesting? But see, I already look at them and I'm like, okay, so it's coming up from the base. It's already growing off the side, which you don't want. Like, I feel like <laughs> with how fast they grow, it's going to be, it's going to be maintenance, but it might be the coolest tree ever. So it's worth a shot. I think what we should do is get the truck and just drive it back here. Okay. Here, do you want to go grab it? Yeah. Benjamin's having a good time planning here. I also have a uh, blackberry tagged. I picked up three blackberries the other day thinking I had picked up four. Um, so my mom tagged an extra one for me because edibles are just flying out the door right now. And we can't get any more because all of our suppliers are out already. And it's March. It'll be another big gardening year, I think. I'm gonna go get the truck so I can load up. What are you gonna get? Well. A you variety of things. Pass it by me before you. I know. I, <laughs> I showed him. I showed him all the uh, the uh, sumacs and how I wow. had one in the back of the truck. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Not above at the age of getting a a, a scolding. A reprimand for a my reprimand mother. For your mother. <laughs> I left a little bit of garbage back there. Some water bottles. Okay, so I think we're gonna start in just loading up and I don't know, maybe we'll get it all out at home and kind of go through everything that we end up with. So anyway, we're just gonna kind of pick through together and Aaron I know has got his eyes on some things and I've got my eyes on things and we're watching Benjamin, trying to keep an eye on him the whole time too. Also, Samantha Grace is at home asleep. She sleeps a lot. She's not by herself, just so you guys know. Thank you. 
Now don't push that. <laughs> Let's lock this up. Well, I don't want to lock you in there. We're going to go pick out a few more things, bud. I'm going to go. Yep, and then we're going to go home. I don't want to go home. You like it here, huh? My blackberry. Okay, I think I'm gonna get six of these. Because as you know, I just planted up our back containers by the shade porch and they were looking a little scant. So I'm going to fill in with some ferns. It's gonna be gorgeous. I think I'm gonna be picking through and getting a lot of the blues out of here. Well, that's a pretty good load right there. I can get a few pots done. All right, we got a liner for the chicken coop window box. And of course some pretty annuals. All right, that's a good looking load and I can't fit anything else. So we're gonna head home. home and I moved most of the new plants to this shady spot so we could see them a little bit better. Everything except for those two massive evergreens. We're going to leave those in the back of the truck because they're going to go on the new property and then we'll just unload them right by where we want to plant them so we don't have to move them too much. Um, we will though in a minute go over and take a closer look. They're beautiful. I love them. But it's so fun to see stuff leafing out. Ugh. And then of course the cartload of beautiful stuff already grown on pretty good. So the uh, ferns right here, I bought actually for these containers because I know, I know these pansies will grow and fill in, but you guys know me. That is too much dirt. I can't be looking at that much dirt for that long. So I'm gonna tuck some ferns in. I think that would be a nice texture anyway. Yes, necessary. Then I got a couple flats of a mixture of blue and purple pansies for the uh, pots near the chicken coop that have the Serbian spruce lollipops. Some of them don't even have color. I like this variety. It's called Beaconsfield. This one is a little bit spent, but you can see the deep purple and it kind of graduates out to a lighter purple and then the lightest of lavender. And that's what this whole flat is right here. And then in the chicken coop window box, I got a couple of liners. I wasn't sure what size to get. So I got both. I'll take the improper size back. And then I'm gonna put a random mixture of plants in. So we're gonna start with this as a back plant, like our centerpiece plant. These are Bright Light Swiss chard. And if you've grown chard before, you know it gets quite large. Um, I don't plan on having it in there for too awful long, so it probably won't get massive. I mean, we'll see, I might regret this choice, but I plan on just pulling it out when I get ready to do summer plants and feeding it to the chickens. So I've got that, and it's an inexpensive centerpiece. I mean, it's a four pack, a couple bucks. And then in front of it, I'm gonna put primrose. I got some really brightly colored primrose and then we're going to ring the front with some really pretty Fort Laramie strawberries that can just dangle out the front of the window box. So that's what we've got on the cart. Right below it are the two honey berries. So again, the honey bunch, which I believe is their newest variety and then sugar pie. Now both of these, let's see, how big does this one get? We will make a video when we decide where we want to plant these. Three to four feet tall and wide. It says thin up to 25% in the spring in, ter in terms of pruning, so that's easy. Sun or part shade. And it does say to plant near another Yasberry variety for maximum harvest, so that's why I got the two of them. And then this one is Honey Bunch. So three to five feet tall and wide. They're both a zone three through seven, really tough. So I'm really looking forward to that. I tried honey bear, look at this. I got my hands all dirty on the forklift, all that grease, Gah. Anyway, I've tried honey berries before, but I did not know to plant more than one variety. And I don't even remember what variety I planted. It was years and years ago. Um, so I didn't really have much luck. So I'm excited to try these again. 
Right here we have the two hydrangeas that Erin picked out. So this is a macrophylla type hydrangea, big leaf. Don't typically have very much luck with these. So I think we're gonna try containers, but like if I can get that to work, look at how pretty that is. That's probably what ours will look like because we are high pH everything around here. Um, but I'm thinking if we do container and add in some soil acidifier, I don't know, we might have some luck with them. And they're really healthy, beautiful looking plants. And then in the bag, I've got our bare root um, blackberry. It's a Primark 45. I bought three the other day. I think I already said that. I wanted four of them. I don't know if you guys remember the four galvanized, well, I only had three galvanized tubs out in the cut flower garden last year and we picked up a fourth um, because I wanted to have enough to do something balanced. I was thinking about putting them in the straight runs, like right behind the straight runs of boxwoods when the alliums bloom, um, but they will kind of line up too much with the urns, I think. So we're just gonna put them out in the cut flower garden, kind of in the center area. Um, and I thought it would be really fun when those alliums were done, we'll pop those out, plant them somewhere else, and then put the blackberries, like one in the center of each one of those tubs and then fill up the rest of the tubs with some kind of edible. That way we can keep the blackberries somewhat contained and uh, I thought it would be kind of a fun, beautiful thing to look at out there. And then the last thing over here are these sesky gold, and I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right, dwarf birch shrubs. Doesn't that look like they, they just glow? So pretty. I don't even know the stats, except for that it stays small. I kind of looked at the size two to four feet tall and wide, zone two through seven. So for those of you who live in really cold areas, this would be a really great shrub for you. Anyway, I'm just really excited about this. Cool, moist, well-drained. These might do really well in that area on the far side of our new property, like by that bank of trees way over there. It stays a lot more cold and a lot more wet than the rest of the property, especially in the winter time. So these might be a really good option it's kind of a filler plant over there. Okay, let's head out to the sun, to the truck, and take a look at these evergreens. Look at them looking all cute back there. Those have Christmas light potential written all over them. So look at the structure of this one. It's a very open. Again, this one is called an Arctos Siberian Spruce. And I'll show you the tag here in a second. I love just the open architectural look. And then we have a nice big scotch pine. That would look cute with great big colorful lights around Christmas. So let's take a look at the tag quick. Scotch pine. 40 to 60 feet tall, 20 to 30 feet wide, zones three through eight. And it's a very water-wise, it's good to plant in a water-wise type of situation. Somewhere where you need um, to have something that can handle a little less water and something that will take up a lot of space. And Erin and I do want several things that get really good size out there because it's a big space, it needs that for some, kind of some weight, some grounding. Uh, so I think having these, we've got those hoop side blue spruces out there um, and we'll add a few more like key big evergreen pieces that will be really nice, I think. And then this one, here's the tag, Arctos Siberian Spruce, look how pretty that is. Oh. Okay. 20 feet high, 10 feet wide. I mean, that's not tiny. I think that that will be a gorgeous one out there too. Hardy to negative 50 degrees. The tag says it does well in more temperate climates as well. So maybe those of you who are in a little bit more warm areas can get something like this to grow nicely for you. And I'd like to know how much these weigh. These are both B&Bs, they're just bald and burlapped and they're just plunked down in containers. You can see the burlap and the rope. We're gonna have to remove all of that when we plant. But that's no big deal. We can do that. So that is it for today's video, you guys. I'm just so excited about just planting in general. Like it doesn't even matter what it is really. You get kind of get to that point, you guys probably do too, where you just like, if you can get your hands on a four pack of whatever, it doesn't even matter. Like you just want to start getting something living in the ground. And um, I'm so thankful we've been able to put the orchard in already, but those haven't even leafed out yet. So to see all these like shrubs leafing out is so exciting. Um, and you will no doubt see whenever we plant these things, you'll see them in a video come along. Um, we have so much to do. I kind of, when we were driving down, I told Aaron like my list is so long. There's so many things I still need to move like in the front yard and from around the gazebo and those projects are gonna start here really quick. Like I need to get on it and here I am just adding new plants to the pile. 
but I know I'm not alone. I'm in good company with you guys. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video, kind of seeing the garden center, seeing it bustle with activity. It's just a really fun time of year and I love it. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.